The year is 2016, and ACDC is on the back end of yet another world tour, supporting their then-newest album, Rock or Bust. The band had just finished their February 28th show in Kansas City, Missouri. However, after the show, Brian Johnson was informed by top-tier hearing loss specialists that if he continued performing with the loudest band in the world, he'd be risking going completely deaf. Brian was heartbroken, but the show must go on. With 23 dates remaining on the tour, they were all postponed, and Angus had a tough decision to make. Dale Skirseth, better known as Opie, is a well-known tour production manager, and filled in Axel Rose on this situation, and Axel then contacted Angus to let him know that he'd like to help. Yes, Axel initiated this, which takes some balls. Angus set up a tryout-like session for the current lineup, Angus, Stevie Young, Cliff Williams, and Chris Slade, to perform with Axel in an Atlanta studio. TMZ released a photo of Axel outside the studio on March 28th, a month after Brian's last show of the tour. Of course, ACDC and Angus have had experience with having to replace their lead singer. However, the circumstances this time are much different. In both situations, a new singer was selected in about a month. Angus and the boys also tried out four other vocalists during the sessions in Atlanta. Chris Slade revealed this information, claiming he was sworn into secrecy about revealing their names. Two of the four have come forward with their stories of the tryouts, both being in ACDC tribute bands, their names being Darren Caperna and Alvy Robinson. Both of them had seemingly dreamlike experiences with the band, jamming for a couple hours each. There are some awesome quotes from Darren and Alvy's auditions that you should check out. It really hit Darren when he was midway through his tryout set. In the middle of Shot Down in Flames, when late singer Bon Scott tells Angus Young, Angus, shoot me. Caperna turned to deliver the line and there, right in front of him, was the real Angus Young. What a trip. Alvy was brought in because bassist Cliff Williams was a fan of his singing on YouTube. Sometime after his tryout, funnily enough, he ended up fronting a Guns N' Roses cover band called Night Train. Awesome of Angus and the boys to do, giving these serious fans the moment of their life, jamming for three hours, and then shooting the shit with them afterwards. Ultimately, Angus decided on Axl Rose fronting the band for the remaining 23 shows of the Rock or Bus Tour. Axl DC was born. They officially went by ACDC featuring Axl Rose, but Axl DC was a name that fans immediately took to. An unlikely combination was born that would rival the likes of Peanut Butter and Jelly, Beavis and Butthead, and Jimi Hendrix and the guitar, at least in my opinion. There was just one problem. Axel was about to embark on a reunion tour with a band of his own, Guns N' Roses. It's hard to imagine one man fronting two of the biggest rock and roll bands in music history, but that's exactly what we were about to witness, history. Management from both bands worked together to make the touring schedules work for both bands, with Axel getting the first seven GNR reunion shows with Slash and Duff McKagan out of the way in April, one of which having Angus come out and rock with the band to Whole Lotta Rosie and Riff Raff at Coachella. Then just two weeks after that Coachella concert, the Rocker Bus Tour was set to resume on May 7th in Lisbon, Portugal. It's amazing how all this was taking place so fast. I was actually at the April 8th GNR show in Las Vegas. I was right there on the railing, five feet from Slash. I was just 16 in my senior year of high school. But luckily for me, my parents are very cool, love rock and roll music, and love to gamble. So we booked a trip to Vegas to see my favorite band ever for the first time in the most epic setting possible. We camped outside the T-Mobile arena starting in the early morning, and when we were in line, it was revealed on social media that Axel had broken his ankle during the first secret reunion show at the Troubadour a week prior. What a time. In the weeks before the rock or bus tour resumed, new official band photos were posted online, along with a couple interviews with Axel, Angus, and Cliff Williams. The extended radio interview with Axel and Angus was especially great, it was interesting hearing Angus address Brian's situation, along with Axel being a bit intimidated by the material and matching prime Brian Johnson vocals. Shit was getting real. You know, there's nothing I can, can't take away anything from Brian singing. You know, it, it is what it is. It's like he's one of, one of the rock singers. I think like in the car or whatever, he could sing part of Back in Black, but I never tried to sing the songs fully and, you know, sing a little bit of Shoot to Thrill, but you always knew it was a really tough song to sing, you know? And I never tried to do it professionally or learn the thing. So, yeah, it, it, it's a challenge. The band arrived in Lisbon early to rehearse, something ACDC take very seriously, and something that Axl Rose notoriously does not. 
but Axel was on his best behavior for this stint, saying he felt like Angus was his boss while performing, not wanting to let him down. Fans outside of the rehearsal space were able to film the band rehearsing, giving hardcore fans their first taste of what this new pairing would sound like. A spark went off for me when I initially heard this. Axl Rose's voice had some very weak moments in the years leading up to 2016, some of which being so embarrassing they were seemingly scrubbed from YouTube. But now, at 54 years old, Axl's voice was in near-prime form. It was clear he was pushing out every ounce of rasp that he possibly could to make these shows as good as possible for the fans. Many fans noticed that Axl's voice was never quite the same following the year 2016. He was prepared to leave it all out on the stage to live out this dream of fronting ACDC. More pictures and rehearsal performances were posted leading up to the Lisbon show, each of which sounding better and better. Fans were given the option to get a refund for their ticket purchase, since many bought their tickets before Brian had to leave the tour. But for those few that chose not to go, they missed out on history. The live stream on Periscope of the first show that I was watching live is still up on YouTube, along with awesome footage of most of the songs from the set. It was like a rock and roll dream, to quote the song off of Black Ice. My favorite band growing up was Guns N' Roses, with my favorite singer being Axel. At the time, being a 16-year-old kid, ACDC were always in my top five bands list. But this string of shows got me diving deep into the ACDC discography, downloading every single song, buying the vinyls, and watching countless live bootlegs. So this combination was pretty mind-blowing to me, and many others. The band opened up with Rock or Bust, and it was non-stop rock history for the next two hours. The band was on fire, Axel was on fire, belting out his best vocals since his heyday in the early 90s, singing songs like Thunderstruck, Back in Black, Hell's Bells with as much power and range as the studio versions, something that Brian was having trouble pulling off by as early as 1983. This is no dig at Brian, just stating facts. I personally feel that Thunderstruck was the song that should be most associated with memories of Axel DC. Axel took the vocals to new levels. Brian could only hit the uber high notes at the end of Back in Black in 1980 and 1981, the years Back in Black was released. Here are some comparisons to subjectively prove just how impressive Axel was at 54 years old. Also, check out how Axel nails the ending of Highway to Hell, and how he rips up the breakdown of High Voltage.
Axel was also credited with doing the Bond material justice as well. Excelling at songs like, If You Want Blood, High Voltage, Shot Down in Flames, and Let There Be Rock. Axel also brought with him new old material for the band to dust off. Live Wire, Riff Raff, If You Want Blood and Rock and Roll Damnation were dusted off songs in frequent rotation on the set list. Along with really rare songs like Touch Too Much, played three times, and Dog Eat Dog and Problem Child, both played once. I was actually in attendance at the final show in Philadelphia where they played Problem Child during the encore, a show that will undoubtedly always remain my favorite concert of my life. More on that show in a few minutes. By the end of the first show in Lisbon, footage was already all over the internet, with a majority of public perception and media response being that this was fucking awesome. Of course, Axl Rose fronting ACDC warranted a lot of public responses from some big voices in rock music. Zach Wilde couldn't think of a better replacement than Axl Rose, and Alice Cooper said Axl's voice was perfect for ACDC. Roger Daltrey laughed at the premise, calling it karaoke with Axl Rose, and a joke. Most ACDC fans were skeptical at best. However, after footage of Axl DC hit the masses, most fans were accepting of the situation, since you couldn't deny how good it was. You can't blame the ACDC diehards that just couldn't accept this situation. Brian was their guy for four decades, that's a big fucking deal. Along with that, Brian is known to be one of the most down-to-earth rock and roll frontmen of all time. I have never once seen his ego run rampant. Something that usually always comes with this level of fame. He seemingly got the shaft in many fans' eyes, and it's their right to be upset. Also, Axel was obviously in a giant throne to start the tour, unable to perform mobily until later in the Europe run of shows. As I discussed, Axel broke his foot in the first show of the GNR reunion the previous month. It just made this entire situation feel even more fictional. A rock and roll fantasy, to quote the Bad Company classic. The band ripped through Europe for 13 shows, concluding on June 15th in Germany. But before doing the last 10 United States dates of the tour, Axel had to go back to singing in his other band for the first leg of the Not In This Lifetime reunion tour. This began eight days after the Germany ACDC show, performing 21 GNR shows between June 23rd and August 22nd. Five days later, the Rock or Bus tour resumed on August 27th in North Carolina. Axel was fully healthy on this leg, no pun intended. And Axel was performing the songs a bit better than during the first leg, as he was much more comfortable with all of the material at this point. The tour ended in Philadelphia, in the previously mentioned show that I attended on September 20th. The band laid it all out on the line, playing the longest set of the entire tour. The crowd was in an uproar after each song, with hundreds of ACDC devil horns lighting up throughout the crowd. This was also, at the time, Cliff Williams' last show with the band. He was just retiring. These guys are getting up there in age. But he ended up changing his mind later on. This show is still the last ACDC show to this day. However, that will change very soon. ACDC was recently announced to be headlining day two of the Power Trip Festival in California on October 7th, 2023. This will be the first time Brian's performed with ACDC since his last show of the Rocker Bus Tour in early 2016. He notably did a one-off performance of Back in Black with the band Muse in 2017. New technology has enabled him to be able to perform safely on stage again. Funnily enough, Guns N' Roses are headlining day one of the same festival. Maybe, just maybe, we'll get the Axel and Brian rock and roll duet that I hoped would be on the 2020 album Power Up, or perhaps another guest appearance from Angus at the GNR show. Looking back, Axel DC is still as good as it was in the moment. I find myself on a near weekly basis listening to different performances throughout the tour. We weren't just wearing Axel rose-colored glasses. His vocals were ferocious and near flawless at times. I am, however, very happy to see Brian back in ACDC where he belongs. He mentioned near suicidal thoughts in his recent book during the time where he had to step away from the band. He didn't want to die in a high-speed car crash, but he wouldn't have minded it. Heavy stuff. Thankfully, nearly every song performed during the tour is available by YouTube search, and I recommend you go back and listen. The best shows of the tour are all subject to Axel's vocals, considering the instrumentals of each song were more or less identical each night, with ACDC not fucking around when it comes to knowing the material inside and out. Axel really did seize the moment. He was a frontman, but knew when to stand back on the stage and let the focus be on Angus. He still did some great dancing to go along with some of the songs, and had some great moments of crowd interaction and one-liners to introduce songs. A little song about man's best friend. Yeah, <laughs> 
about kindness and giving. Give, give, give. His introduction to giving the dog a bone will always be my favorite. Just classic. I believe his best performances to be the first three of the European leg, Lisbon, Seville, and Marseille. Axel was seated in his throne, allowing him to have better lung control, not moving around constantly as he's known to do, just like Angus. Axel lost a bit of the rasp in the middle of the Euro leg, but finished the leg strong. Fans suspected that he may have had a cold during the middle stretch, as he lost some depth in his voice, along with coughing and blowing his nose on stage. The US leg had much more consistent vocals from Axel. Pretty much each show was raspy as all hell. My favorite bootleg is the full audio of the final show in Philly. It has some of the best vocals and performances from the whole tour. Hear it for yourself. The set list is the best of the whole tour in my opinion, and the sound quality is great. I actually have the bootleg on CD. I bought that on eBay and listen to it in my truck often. I hope you were able to enjoy this rock and roll fantasy collaboration like I did. I truly believe that no other music moment will ever resonate this much with me for the rest of my life. Now we wait for the Power Trip Festival in October of 2023 for this rock and roll fantasy to come full circle.